Welcome to the Fun Astrology Podcast for Valentine's Day, Tuesday, February 14th. Thank you so much for joining us. Give you romantics a little tip here. The aspect is not today, but boy, you are in the full strength of it today because tomorrow, early in the morning, Eastern Time, 725, Venus conjoins Neptune. So here is your 2023 Valentine's secret. Make it mysterious. Incorporate a secret into your Valentine's Day for your lover tomorrow. This Venusian conjunction is in the sign of Pisces. So everything about water, hot baths with oil, surprise massages, a secret gift, you get the idea. The force is with you, <laughs> and I wish you a happy Valentine's Day. We're going to talk about the opposite of all that now, <laughs> because I had a great listener question that really struck a chord in my heart. For those of you who listen to the Subconscious Mind Mastery podcast, I did an episode on this that was released on Sunday. I did that episode more from the perspective that the Subconscious Mind Mastery podcast deals with, and that is primarily, obviously, reprogramming our lives. Here, we're going to talk about the astrology, and for that, the setup question. Hi, Thomas. My name is Annette from Denver, longtime listener. I absolutely love what you're doing. I love all of the effort and knowledge you're giving us. My question is about planets and detriment in our natal chart. So how do we find growth from uncomfortable positionings that keep recurring over and over again. For example, I am a Cancer Sun and I have uh, my ascendant as Cancer. And then I got good old Mars there, one degree away from my sun, like 28, 29 degrees. And it's just causing so much fun. <laughs> I don't think I've integrated it. And I know a lot of us have other interesting aspects, squares, whatnot, things to reconcile. Uh, maybe this is a broad question, but you've done a lot of self-work yourself. Where did you start? Thank you so much. I can't wait to hear what you say. Love what you do. Thank you so much, Annette. And I appreciated this question so much that it's going to be on all the three podcasts that I do. This one, Subconscious Mind Mastery, and Robert and I are going to discuss it as well. That, of course, is the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. And by the way, we'd love to have you check out our YouTube page. The reason it just triggered that thought is that my buddy Chet, who has been working with me on this, doing a brilliant job, has put all of Robert's podcasts in their own playlist, and then all the fun astrology. And then we're starting to do some other videos, too, slowly. So there are going to be some other additions there. That's my focus for the rest of this year, expanding the video. Now, this aspect is something that I happen to have quite a bit of experience with because my own Sun and Mars are also right on top of each other. If you wanted to play uh, mine is bigger than yours kind of game, <laughs> mine is in Scorpio, which of course is sheer intensity. And it's also the only water sign that really is a fire sign because in ancient astrology, Scorpio is ruled by Mars. I said on the other podcast, I would trade you that cancer <laughs> right now. We could bargain on that one. But regardless, this is a very passionate, fiery, intense aspect. Whenever you have a planet conjunct your sun, it magnifies the characteristics of that planet. And I know we could go into under the beams. Well, it's... You could say, oh, it's under the beams, Annette. You don't have to worry about it. Ask Annette about that. Or you could say a Kazemi, where it's about a half a degree. Some say 16, 17 minutes, but basically a half a degree away from the sun. Extra amplification. William Lilly called the Kazemi sitting with the king in one chair. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'll bet if you asked Annette, she would just say, it's intense. And I, I was, she's saying, help me. And you know, I think we all have aspects in our chart where we say, wow, that one just plays on my fiddle string. You know, it's, that's the one that I can't seem to overcome. One of the things I think that's very important about these sun aspects, wherever you have aspects related to the sun in the chart, it becomes very personal. 
So don't try to swallow the collective lollipop of energy to deal with what is very personal to you. You remember the song, I think it was Lady Gaga, right? You guys will know this better than me. I was born that way. <laughs> you, know, you just accept, hey, I was born this way. I have this aspect. It produces X in my life, in this case, incredible intensity, a very hot passion to accomplish anything, whatever that is. And you want it now. And that tension, I mean, the God of war is often inside of you, whether it even comes out or not. You can be at war internally, and if you're really good at masking it, nobody would ever know, but you are just turned inside out and upside down. I had that happen recently on a trip over to the east coast of Florida to visit my brother. I was just this kind of almost a wreck inside, and yet outside have learned how to manage it, and I hope it didn't come through. But one other area that we can look at, and I know this is so surface, that's why I would send you over to the Subconscious Mind Mastery podcast for the in-depth, about 30 minutes or 35 minutes of explanation on this. But I think one of the other areas astrologically that we should not forget is that astrology is built on opposites. So when we run out of gas in one area, we look at the opposite area of the chart for the solution. So for Annette, that's going to be looking at the later degrees of Capricorn, what is there, any other aspects to it, or what sign rules it. And then you could also, as Robert has taught us over on Old Soul, New Soul, you could go into the Deccan or the Dwad sub-rulerships of that area of the chart. And then she mentioned that one of the two planets is at 29 degrees. Well, that planet has its eye on Aquarius. So there's more tension pulling on that dynamic of the Sun and Mars together anyway. So these are the various ways that you can look for the clues in the chart. And actually, I think if uh, we haven't recorded Roberts yet, but I think that's going to be what we're going to try to tackle is finding the solutions to these challenging aspects in our chart. Annette, thank you for such a great question. Really appreciate it. When you make all three podcasts with a question, that's a great question. Hope you guys have a good Tuesday. See you back tomorrow. We'll tackle hump day and talk a little bit more about this Venus-Neptune aspect because there's a money side of it that we can consider as well. Have a great day. Love you. Thanks for listening. <laughs>